In this tutorial, we'll talk about using skinning to define hollow or flow through components. Now you can see that I've defined this example part to be hollow down the middle. It's got a set constant radius or a constant diameter along the inside, constant diameter on the outside, and I've set it to have some rounded edges here on the front and back, just using some skinning. So let's click on this component and turn on shade. And I've applied a transparent material so we can see the feature lines and cross sections as we move through this component. So let's start here with cross section zero and take a look at the angles and controls that we have. Because I have this on a loop design policy, cross section zero and the last cross section, number four, are gonna be defined to have the same parameters. So same location, same circumference, or same uh, diameter in this case. And the skinning, can be slightly different because as far as the stack is concerned, we're going down around and coming back. So we've got zero degrees relative to this section, which means that we've got our angle set to be zero degrees from this cross section. We can increase or decrease like we would normally, but for right now, for this example, let's leave that at zero. Coming to cross section one, which is 15 units away in X, we've got zero on the left to maintain that it's straight, zero on the right to make sure that that's continuous, and we've lofted this strength out on the after side to be a strength of two to kind of give it a semi-circular rounded edge here. Now let's come to section two and take a look at what's different. We've gone from our end interior section to our end exterior section, and note that we now have to use a skinning angle of 180 degrees to maintain this surface bending around and maintaining it normal pointing out. And the reason for that is the way that I defined this section was along the interior first and then looping back around and designing the exterior. So as far as VSP is concerned, I've gone from here and turned the curve inside out and gone this way. Now, from here we go zero, 90, up to 180, and now we're pointed back in the direction that we wanna go. But also note that because we did that, this section follows after this section, meaning that what's normally the before controls actually control your downstream surface. All right? So you have to remember the order that you build your cross sections. In this case, we'll set this back to two. Note that we maintain 180 again on the right-hand side and we're lofting it straight. Let's come back out to section three again. 180 on the before side and on the after side. We're pushing it out with a magnitude of two. And then we go 180, back around 90 and zero to meet back up on section four. Now, because section four is our last section, we only have control over this left-hand side. This right side doesn't do anything. So we can set this to be two and we maintain our rounded edges. Now, if I would have started on the outside, lofted it down, started at this section and then say, uh, you can see here I had to come back 15 units or minus 15 units to bring it this way. Then I would go zero, zero, around to minus 180, minus 180, back to zero. And it, because it depends on what direction you start with on the outside or the inside and how you turn this thing inside out. 